Welcome back to the bench. Well, I think this one should be a pretty interesting story. So in front of us is an ICOM 731S, which is interesting because I just won a e eBay sale, I guess win, which should be in quotes. Anyway, here's what I bought or what I bid on. I bought a radio for 150 bucks from Japan because it was listed as, uh, what does it say? It says, uh, IC731 repair required, not power on. So that seemed like, well, that should be fun to fix. But what I got instead was, in fact, here's the picture of the IC731 in question. And if I uh, point my finger here, you'll see that they, uh, they look different. There's no S in the picture. So clearly they shipped a different radio than I bought or than I thought. And also if you look at the top left corner here and uh, the top left corner here this one has a 10 watt uh limit sticker with japanese writing that says it's an s model so i think we didn't get the right radio to start with <clears throat> but i've been playing with it a bit and i guess i would like to uh show you my proposed name for this radio it would be musty because it arrived very dirty and uh, corroded and with a sweet, odd smell that I would call musty. So in the, in the spirit of rusty, uh, we're gonna call this radio musty. So you can see it's in pretty reasonable shape. And by the way, I have sent a mail off to the seller to say you shipped me the wrong radio. So I'm not sure exactly how the saga will end. Um, you can see this one, I've, I've used some Scotch-Brite and a lot of cleaning and uh, cleaned the cable and the connectors so that things look fairly clean and bright. But you can get the idea from this. I've even cleaned this already and it's still really dingy looking, kind of musty looking and rusty. Um, but it's not a horrible looking radio. And uh, the one in the picture also has uh, the mysterious flip down dial or cover and we don't have that cover on this radio either and uh, if we power on musty you can see that uh, this is not the won't power on radio because this radio powers on and uh, it's quite a unique set of uh, symptoms so here's an antenna um, if you'd like i can prove first Let, let's do that let's test the test bed so I will uh, bring down Rusty and we will test the test bed to make sure that the conditions are correct for uh, proving that what we're testing is true. So I'm bringing Rusty down. It is pretty heavy. All right, so here is Rusty. And just to prove that it's Rusty, there you can see that it is Rusty. And in the front, this one says ICOM 735. And interesting, if you guys know, you can tell me in the comments, I guess. But if you look at Rusty and Musty together, um, the, the logo is completely different. Different font, larger. Um, the font down here is smaller. Also, uh, to the left... You can see this ICOM logo has a circle over the eye, and this ICOM logo has a square ICOM and block letters. So I'm sure one of those is newer than the other one, but that's part of the interesting story of Rusty and Musty. So first of all, let's just uh, back up a bit and uh, see if we can power up Rusty so we can make sure that the antenna and such are valid for our test so there's the coax and here's the power and i wish i had two power connectors i'll, I'll get that going soon i guess all right so we'll go up here here is rusty and if you remember rusty has developed some kind of a problem um in i think the uh pll because it doesn't receive right on all bands, but so let's see, let's get the right antenna selected. And uh, that should be this one. And we'll go to 
maybe 30 meters. And that sounds a little dead. Let's see. Let's see. We are on the coax with the red stripe. That should be this switch. And let me see, let me get musty out of the way. So on the back, we have to make sure I've got, actually I have uh, the cable that came on musty here on the receive input. And I'm not hearing much there, so let me borrow the working cable that I've been using on Rusty, which is this one. Let's see that that helps. That doesn't sound too good. I would have thought I would have heard quite a lot of noise just by touching that. Because that's the direct receive input. So let's see, we have the RF gain up. AGC is doing its thing. Squelch is down, volume is up. We'll switch some bands here. There's 40 meters. Switch to the 40 meter antenna. Well, that's a new dilemma. Let me, uh, it's definitely the switch in the right place. And the tuner is in the right place. So now we have a new dilemma. Because now... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys should have pointed out that is not rusty. This is musty. So musty seems to have some kind of a receive problem because musty doesn't receive a darn thing. So let me uh, let me bring over rusty to prove that that would be true. So that was the first error was testing the test bed with the device under test and instead of the reference standard, which would be rusty. All right, so we will uh, connect up the antenna and put on the receiver antenna jumper. And that is the inside one. And you can see if I touch, first, if I touch that, you can hear. So we should hear that when we power up Musty because Rusty has a, a hotter antenna. Okay, now we're on 30 meters. I'm on the... 30 meter antenna now. And I can hear that there are some signals there, but nothing to show you that we're running at. So let's go down to 40. Okay, there's some digital and some signals. So we will bring Musty over and try Musty on 40 meters around 7060 and see what happens. So we know that the antenna and the power are correct. All right, here comes Musty. Antenna, power. All right, so the first test is I'll pull off the receive antenna and touch it, and I don't hear anything different, so that's a bad sign. Then we'll go down to 40, and 060. And by the way, I've got to tell you, when Musty showed up, Musty's BFO was locked solid, completely solid. So you can see we have no signals. We do have RF gain. And we have telltale signs that are, I think, important that the attenuator makes no sound difference and the preamp makes no sound difference. So I don't think anything is getting from the antenna uh, past the preamp. So that's a bad sign. And uh, you guys can let me know. I actually want to take the VFO apart again because I did a, a quick pull it apart and uh, lubricate it. Um, I'll show you how frozen up it was. If we take off the knob, 
you can see <clears throat> that somebody had been trying really hard to turn the knob because let's see if I can get that in there yep you can see if I zoom in that the knob or I should say the shaft is uh, pretty torn up from the screw spinning around on the shaft so it was so locked up that they could spin the knob with it tightened down and it would not move the shaft. So I did pull out the VFO and uh, pull the whole shaft out and found out that uh, with a little bit of oil and a little persuasion it eventually started moving. So it's feeling pretty free now, but I think it probably should get cleaned and re-greased at some point. So we'll do that. And since, like I said, there was nothing to lose, uh, I found out that people are right, that it isn't hermetically sealed, it isn't uh, particularly critical, it looks like. It's a slotted disc that runs around and goes through the LED and detector. Um, it's definitely not sealed, and when I pulled off the clip, I was able to pull the shaft out and clean it up. So that was an interest, pardon me, an interesting uh, sort of exercise to try. So let me know what you think. I'm leaning toward uh, signal tracing, but I, I think that it might be worthwhile to go through, um, let me show you what I found digging through the manuals, um, first of all. And I have a full schematic printed, and this won't help much because you can't really read it, but this is the black diagram of the 735. Um, which I assume will be the same as the 731. And if you blow that up a little bit, you can get uh, some interesting things where you learn, here is uh, the beginnings of the schematic, where we can see the receive antenna, where we come through uh, some kind of switch, which we will assume is on, and then through some filtering. And then we end up going up through the attenuator and then through the preamp. So I'll bring up the, the block diagram and the, and the uh, schematic a bit later when we start playing with it. But it seems to me that although we can change bands and other than changing modes, which should change the sound, if we stay on the same mode, I don't hear any change at all. So I'm pretty sure the PLL isn't working correctly on and uh, giving us local oscillator signals. So it might be worth just going through the manual's uh, check on the PLL outputs and voltages, or we could go signal tracing. So you guys let me know what you think is the right thing to do with Musty. And uh, in the meantime, I will communicate with uh, Musty's owner and see if we can work out a deal for the original 731 that was supposed to come over. And uh, we'll find that out soon. So. Have, lucky to have you meet Musty. Let's see how how this goes. See you later.